nice. No, um, this is um, time for Grandma Reads a Story. And we have a Foster Grandparents Program of Oakland County, sponsored by Catholic Charities of Southeastern Michigan. And we're joining with the Ohio Public Library and we're celebrating National Library Week. We have Grandma Bender, who's going to be reading a story for us today. So um, let's enjoy. Welcome, Grandma Bender. Good afternoon. My name is Grandma Bender. I'm a volunteer in the Foster Grandparent Program of Oakland County, sponsored by the Catholic Charities of Southeast Michigan. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Let's get started with our book. Today, I'll be sharing two books with you. The first one is called Interrupting Chicken. Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein. It was bedtime for the little red chicken. Okay, my little chicken, said Papa. Are you all ready to go to sleep? Yes, Papa, but you forgot something. What's that, asked Papa? A bedtime story. All right, said Papa. I'll read one of your favorites. And of course, you are not going to interrupt the story tonight, are you? Oh, no, Papa. I'll be good. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel was very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until the old woman who lived there came out and said, what lovely children. Why don't you come inside? They were just about to follow her when out jumped a little red chicken and she said, don't go in, she's a witch. So Hansel and Gretel didn't the end. Chicken, yes, Paw Paw, you interrupted the story. Try not to get so involved. I'm sorry, Papa, but she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. Let's try another story. I'll be good. Little Red Riding Hood. Take this basket of goodies to Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. But don't stray from the path. The woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep woods. By and by, she met a wolf who wished her good morning. She was about to answer him when out jumped a little red chicken. And she said, don't talk to strangers. So Little Red Riding Hood didn't. The end. Chicken. Yes, Popo. You did it again. You interrupted two stories and you're not even sleepy. I know, Popo. I'm sorry, but he was a mean old wolf. Yes, now get back into bed. Okay, Popo. Let's try one more story and I'll be good. Chicken Little. Chicken Little was hit on the head by an acorn. The sky is falling, she thought. She was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy, Ducky Lucky, and Henny Penny. 
and everyone on the farm that the sky was falling when out jumped a little red chicken and she said, don't panic. It was just an acorn. So Chicken Lou did the end. Chicken, yes, Papa, you did it again. Oh, Papa, I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read one more story and I promise I'll fall asleep. But Chicken said, but Chicken said, Papa, we are out of stories. Oh no, Papa, I can't go to sleep without a story. Then said Papa, yawning, why don't you let, why don't you tell me a story? Me tell a story, said the little red hen. Okay, Papa, here we go. Bedtime for Papa by Chicken. Once there was a little red chicken who put her papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She even gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed wide awake. All papa. Good night, Paul Paul. The end. I hope you enjoyed that first story. We have one more to go. The second one is called Wild About Books by Judy Sierra. Wild About Books. It started the summer of 2002 when the Springfield librarian, Molly McGrew, by mistake, drove her bookmobile into the zoo. Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. By, re by reading aloud from the good Dr. Seuss, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat and onyx, a lemur and a lynx, eight elephant calves and a family of skinks. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new something called reading. Forsaking their niches, their nest and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books and fat books and cat in the hat books, and new books and true books and heaps of how-to books. Giraffes wanted tall books and crickets craved small books, while geckos could only read stink to the wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their request, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for the otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Raccoons read alone and baboons read in bunches and llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shared jokes with the red-bellied snakes and they howl and they hiss till their funny bones ate. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there at the zoo, such as, why were the Bendicott's book overdue? Gently, Molly taught lessons and treating books right, 
So the boa constrictor squares critter too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up good night moon with their paws. Giant termites devoured the wizard of Oz. And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pictures right off the pages. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Python wrote with their tails. Penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, Bugs was scribbling Hanaku. The scorpion gave each a stinking review. As the cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night till the Barbary ate. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. Imagine the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer Prize. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork, and a group to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, we can do it ourselves. We can check the books out. We can put them on shelves. And they did, and they do up to this very day. Three cheers for the zoo brary. When you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a bit hard to find. They are snug in their niches, their nest and their nooks, going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. The end. I hope you enjoyed the books today. And I hope you will be right back here next Thursday at 3 p.m for another story. Thank you. Happy reading. Oh, well, we en I enjoyed that, those stories, uh, Grandma Bender, but I was wondering if our kids would help us out, if they could answer like in um, uh, the uh, Facebook, make some comments. Um, they could answer questions like, what happened in the beginning? interrupting a chicken. How did it start out? Okay. And so they could maybe answer that. And um, uh, also, what what happens, they could answer another question, like what happened in the middle, um, in the middle of the story. So, um, and what was your favorite part, Grandma Bender, in the story of um, interrupting chicken. What did you like best? My favorite part was when he was so excited from the reading that he couldn't help but interrupt while his pawpaw was reading, which means we should get excited when we read our books. And what I was, what I thought is intriguing was why he interrupted. At, it took me a little bit to think about why did he keep interrupting? He seemed like a very nice kind of kid. He's like, oh, I won't, I promise I won't interrupt. Uh -huh. Sometimes sometimes it's hard for kids and adults to do the things or not do the things they're supposed to do. But, but the reason that he gave, I thought was interesting. Did you, did you notice that part of why? Like, for example, with Little Red Riding Hood, he interrupted because uh, he was concerned about Red Riding Hood yeah. and it was a wolf. Yeah. You know? So it just struck me that interrupting Chicken really was a nice person. He really kept interrupting because stories, they have things that happen. 
Yeah. And that's the whole point of stories is something happens. But he just kept interrupting because he wanted to fix everything. Yeah. And he, he wanted concerned. everybody to be happy. Wouldn't it be nice if more people thought that way? Oh, yes. <laughs> Certainly would. And so that's what um, what else struck you um, about the interrupting chicken? Well, he was supposed to have been going to sleep, but he put his dad to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was funny. He kept saying that um, he couldn't go to sleep without a story. He had to have a story to go to sleep. But he kept himself up awake trying to fix the problems. Mm -hmm. And then um, and he starts telling the story. Um, his dad goes to sleep. But what I thought it was nice is that he was kind to his dad, even when his dad went to sleep on him. <laughs> he didn't get insulted. He really was a nice person. Yes, he was. So uh, I'm going to check to see if we have any comments in our Facebook Live. And um, let you talk for a minute about um, anything that you think, like you might, I don't know about that book or the other book, which That's was. Nice comments. We do have some people watching though, which is a good thing. Okay. Um, and what did you think about um, Wild about books. That books are for everyone. Everyone. And you just need to sit down and start reading to get it excited about them. And how she how she made them available. What I thought was interesting how she ended up at how did how she ended up at the zoo? Did you did you um, so anybody on Facebook can add a comment to our page, Facebook page? Did you notice how the librarian ended up at the zoo? Um, maybe somebody will uh, comment on that. Okay. But, but um, I thought it was interesting because I don't know about you, Grandma Bender, but so many times something happens mm -hmm. and it, something was going wrong. But if you kind of like go with the flow, I mean, you can be miserable and say, oh, you know, this is wrong or that's wrong. But if you go with the flow, something happens. It's like almost as if you it was meant to happen. Yes. And that's what happened in this story. So she ended up um, accidentally at the zoo. And she took advantage of that. Yes. She that took advantage. Cool. Yeah. And it's, that's one of the things I, uh, <clears throat> that is, I think, most important is to take advantage of things that go wrong, uh, places we end up not expecting to be. Um, and sometimes even things we regret saying. Sometimes if we have a conversation, and apologize sometimes um, good things happen after all yes and then um what i was interested in is um i thought it was like uh a panda the panda had to learn wanted library books in chinese I thought that was really funny. And you mentioned that she got books for all the different animals. What what did you notice in particular? What were some highlights? About the animals? Yeah, and how she she got them the books that they wanted. You can sometimes okay. you can even share the picture, you know, so it helps the kids at home. Okay, okay. Let me see. 
I know on this page where it say they went wow, simply wow, when they saw the books and they began to read, say they just went wow about all the wonderful books because she had different books for different animals. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then look, at the, look at the baby even reading. Can you <laughs> see it? Yeah. The baby kangaroo reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is cute. <laughs> I like the waterproof books for the otters. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was a little disappointed as a librarian that the termites had bad manners. Do you remember what the termites did? They ate the book. <laughs> <laughs> the the ants. <laughs> yeah. Well. And uh, some one of the animals that had the, the long tongues licked all the pictures off the pages. Um, and I particularly liked um, the Tasmanian devils. They decided to give up fighting. Can't you see, couldn't you just see people sitting on a tree reading instead of fighting? <laughs> oh. So what are some other neat pages that you like? Well, that's about it, you know, because it show each one is uh, excited. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, one of those pages, the scorpion he gave a review about everybody else who was doing the reading oh okay That's i was cool. trying to find that page right quick uh -huh. right here oh he, he gave them all a, a review <laughs> uh, that seems appropriate because they, they pay attention don't they <laughs> they so do contentious. <laughs> Yeah, the dung beetle, even a lot of animals. I thought it was neat at the end that um, she accidentally drove up to the zoo. And then the animals, having never heard stories or had anything read to them, went wild about it. And then they decided to do something. They decided to build a library, a branch. And then what I really liked is, again, um, all the animals said they all volunteered. You know, yes. they're all going to volunteer to help out, check out books, and to do all the things that need to be done in a library. So, so OK, well, so next week is going to be um, Money Smart Week. And so we're going to have two books um, about money and handling money by the Berenstein Bears. One is Trouble with Money. The kids just uh, didn't know what to do. As soon as they got money in their pockets, they spent it. And it's a, so when, and what's the, and the problem that they found out is that whenever you have money, you spend it right away. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to get the money to get more money. And so that always is a feeling of being broke. Oh. So they decide that it isn't a whole lot of fun of feeling broke all the time. So um, their parents help them out so that they would feel broke all the time. They could um, handle money a little more wisely. And then um, the next book is uh, Dollar Cents and um, it's more about budgeting, which isn't a whole lot of fun. But um, but if you budget, then um, again, you don't have the problem with being broke. Okay. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing those two stories, Grandma Bender. Thank and, you. Um, look forward to next week and sharing some more stories. And this one's just funny. Okay.
thank you for celebrating National Library uh, Week with us. All right, happy reading.